As a non-drinker, and my opinion of beer is that it tastes awful and is a waste of money, I was surprised to find myself enjoying a tour of Palmer's Brewery. There is a lot of history to the brewery. Built on the River Brit in 1794, it has been brewing beer ever since. We wait in the wine store for our guide and a high-vis jacket that we have to wear. When both arrived, we were led up several narrow steep stairs for our tour to begin. This, this company, Palmer's, although the brewery goes back to 1794, the Palmer family didn't exist in the family brewery till a century later, 1894-95, when the Palmer brothers took over. Now we have, strangely enough, four generations on, we've got two more brothers, Palmer. John Palmer is the senior director, managing director. His younger brother by 10 years is Cleves Palmer, who is the sales and marketing director. When we first, I first came here, all these sacks had to be screened. Any sort of foreign and alien bodies in the sacks. Now, they that, I mean, obviously, we would get small rodents, dead bodies floating through the sacks. Little bits of combine harvester. The worst thing of all we wanted to avoid was stones with flints in them that would obviously go in through the mill. If you look inside where, where this is, you can see a darker grain and then a lighter grain. And that's because the darker grain has undergone more roasting in its preparation than the lighter one. For a start, in a malt house, all the grain is steeped in water for up to 60 hours. During that time, everything is thoroughly drenched and soaked, so it stimulates germination. As soon as the germination shows, they whisk away a quantity and roast it in the kiln. So the longer the roast, obviously, the darker the grain. For one brew alone, our biggest brew we can do in one time is 60 barrels. Now, that may not mean much in quantity to you. Now, you're all of the age I can talk in pints instead of litres, so that's good. So, 60 barrels, if I break it down to pints, is 17,000 pints. Now, we may measure everything in barrels, but we don't sell anything in a barrel. All those that we pass on the way up, they're called casks, because they're all individual sizes. You may have noticed a small one. That's just a pin, it's called, and it's four and a half gallons. Then the next size, you double the four and a half gallon, so you've got a nine gallon, and that's called a firkin. And you double the nine gallons to 18 gallons, and you've got a kilderkin. So the only three sizes we actually, real ale comes in, is pin, firkin, kilderkin. You may have also noticed some, in the, if your eyes are looking around, you see some straight edge. They're not casts, they're kegs. And that's stuff, funny stuff, called lager. <laughs> uh, once all that grain barley goes into here, we change the name for the first time. It then becomes grist. The grist is off to the mill. It goes through the mill, it goes through rollers, which don't actually crush it into a fine powder. All it does is crack open the husks in order to get the starch inside to convert into sugar. So that's the next journey downwards for this lot, and we'll see that as we go downstairs in a minute, what happens to it from there. More stairs down to an historic grist sorter. 1885, this machine came to the brewery to work for us. And it worked for 124 years solidly. Every day of the working week, it worked. And what its job was, it was to screen the grist. The grist is sent down to the mash tank, sprayed with hot water, and is heated to 140 degrees for about two hours. This allows the starch in the grain to be broken down into sugar. The liquid, now known as wort, is drained off. Hops are added, it's boiled, and when cooled, yeast is added, and it's left to ferment. We are shown an old wort cooler, not in use anymore. Because during the boiling time, yeah. Then we were taken in to see and smell the dried hops. Yeah. 
Meticulous records are kept at every stage in the beer making process. Some were tempted to taste the yeast. Now the gold is, you see there's too much yeast in there above the L. So it's coming into here. If anybody wants to get this close and have a good inhalation of that, it's rather delicious smell. We now arrive at the ground floor. Here the casks are cleaned, sent through the sterilizer and filled with the end product of all that work. The casks today are loaded onto vans and lorries for delivery. But once dray horses were used. This is the head brewer, Mr. Darren Batter. He had a more pressing job to do on the day. 